whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming and the rockets rang loud the bombs bursting in The following broadcast is an official production of the Faulkner Sports Network. And it looks like Amy Winston is trying to make some noise here. But... All right, Reinhardt back on point, gets his ult, knocks him down. Here we go. Here by in. Shadow of Four. What a triple kill. And they keep it going. Oh, well, well. All left is our healer and our tank. Yep. Which, to their credit, doing a pretty good job of holding off this onslaught. Woohoo! Oh, got the ball. Nice. All right. He's oh, on to the payload for there. overtime. Here we go, folks. Can he maintain for a tank to get through? And he is able to. He's gonna have to. Here we go, overtime. Oh. They gotta push through. Oh. Gotta get rid of the defenders Another quick percent. enough. Raptor Claw really going nuts here with the triple kill. Not bad. Get some, Diva. Oh, and Shadow with the kill. All right. Here we go. Come on, guys. Can I get that? That tracer is giving him so much trouble. That tracer's tricky. That teleport ability lets her stay on point for a while. Overtime is gone. Good job, guys. And welcome in, everybody. Thank you so much for being with us here for our production of Faulkner versus the College of New Jersey. We are here. We know that this is a late one, but we appreciate you being here for the game this evening. I'm head coach Caleb Talkwit. I'll be your color commentary. I'm Joshua Chauci. And we've got a big game going on. The guys are already ready. So very quickly, let's go ahead and take a look inside Regitar USA High Res Arena and meet our players. Over there on the far left, we've got Trey Parker, Viva Caligula. Next to him, we have Chiaki, that's Peyton Provo. And over there on the far right, that's the lieutenant of the team. Uh, that is Ian McFarlane, IND, or Mr. IND, as I like to call him. And then over on the other side, we've got over there on the far left, directly under the Regitar USA High Res Arena sign, that's good going to Tom. be good old Tom, <laughs> whose name is Tom, interestingly enough. Uh, and over there on the right, we've got, of course, Jesse Clark who goes by Shadow04. So uh, they're already picking their champions, and we will be getting into gameplay very quickly here tonight. Uh, we know that this is going to be a late one, but hopefully it ends in a Faulkner victory. So uh, we, hope. we hope. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. We do appreciate you sticking with us. And even though the uh, hour is late, as it were, in the season, there is still a potential that Faulkner could clinch a playoff appearance if they win tonight and they win Tuesday for our next That would game. be clutch. That would be pretty clutch. Uh, they've struggled a lot this season, but we've seen them get progressively better as the season has gone on. There's been a lot of adjustments made, a lot of improvement, and we could potentially see Faulkner get a victory here and be able to, uh, you know, work their way into getting the playoffs. They've come very close in a couple of games. Oh, yeah, very, very close. And we really expect them to be able to do it. So, interestingly enough, we're paused right now. I'm not sure exactly what's going on there. Uh, I don't know if the other team has paused or there's been some kind of technical issue. I hope that's not the case. Sometimes when they get into these early games, there are lag issues or whatever. Uh, 
Uh, I haven't seen any sign that that has happened tonight, so I would assume it's the other team. But we don't know that for sure. They hit a bathroom break. That must have been a <laughs> just a just a giant bathroom break. The whole team had to go at the same time. though. Something. Yep. <laughs> yeah, we're 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 all into speculation. Oh so yeah, hundred percent. That's what we do on our downtime. Yeah. Oh, uh, actually, since this is the first time I've been on the air since the charity live stream on Friday, I did want to go ahead and announce this. Uh, we were able to raise two hundred and eighteen dollars, which I, well, of course we announced that night uh, when the live stream ended. That at the end, where we announced the winner of the costume contest, which was our own producer, Mike Johnston. So he actually won the costume contest. Uh, and uh, the final raise there was two hundred and eighteen dollars. And here's the funny thing. The next day, I actually showed up to our homecoming football game as Larry Culpepper. That was beautiful. And uh, <laughs> raised money by passing out Dr. Peppers to people and asked them to donate. And we wound up raising $217. That so was exactly $1 shy of how much we raised on the live stream. That's uh, crazy. And that brought, they brought us to a grand total of $435. Coach over here being a one-man army. <laughs> But, uh, well, no, it was all of us, especially with the, uh, the live stream. Uh, it took a lot of people and a lot of late hours, you being part of that, especially with, like, the, uh, the Who's line and then uh, our own Ian, who's playing tonight, being a part of the uh, Geek End episode. So there were a lot of people that came together to make that been a success, and we do appreciate, of course, everybody that watches and uh, thank them for their support. Uh, and, you know, $435, that's going to be able to help an awful lot of families affected by the war in Ukraine. All right, it looks like they were unpaused for about 5.7 seconds, and now they're paused again. So I don't know what's going on here, but we'll figure it out soon. Uh, Mike, do you know what's going on there? Oh, somebody on the other team has a PC that keeps crashing. All right, so hopefully we can fig figure that out. Obviously, um, that's the problem on their end, but we hope that they can sort of sort that out quickly. Uh, I hope um, that we're able to get done with that and, and hopefully we can get a game in tonight. If we can't, there is also the possibility uh, we have the option of allowing them to reschedule again. Um, I hope we don't have to do that, but if we do, we may uh, have a very short broadcast tonight and just uh, I mean... have to wait for them. <laughs> but I mean, here's the thing too. Uh, obviously, just being a sportsman, you don't want to win by forfeit. Oh, yeah, never. However, uh, it would also be really important that we not win by forfeit if we're looking at trying to get into a playoff spot because uh, forfeits don't count for quite as much as winning by actually beating the other team. So, like, let's say in the bracket there's another two-win team uh, up against us that's ranked the same as us, and one of our wins is a forfeit, and both of their wins are not forfeits, then they would actually win unless we beat them. So the ultimate tiebreaker yeah. is in a head-to-head -head competition. So I tell you what, why don't we go ahead and while we're waiting on that, I'll go ahead and look up the league standings to give everybody an idea of what that looks like right now. Uh, we'll just pull up a star league and come on now. Overwatch two. Overwatch two. Over plus. Okay, so currently in the standings, uh, one of the teams, if I'm not mistaken, oh no, wait, that's George Mason University. So uh, George Mason is the team that we would need to eke out. They're currently ranked, uh, they currently have one win, five losses, which means that for us to be able to beat them, we would have to beat them outright. In other words, they have to win both, uh, they have to lose both of their games, and we have to win both of our games in order to beat them. Now, that would still only put us in the seventh slot. So we would have to. Oh. No, I won't uh, stand Actually, for it. looks like we're in a game already. Yeah, it does. So I misread it because they have a three way tie for fourth, but when that tie breaks, regardless of how it breaks, uh, actually, even if we win both games, each of those games have three games. So that's really good. Really, 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 really. Yeah, it really is. Um, but here we go. Uh, in a match against College of New Jersey. 
Looks like we have a Lucy on the back line. And it is Tom. Tom making his debut yet again. <laughs> Beating up his team a little bit with a Diva. We are able to use the main to go off the team. They're almost going down. Okay, they've got the Lucy on the tower of the field. And now he's trying to take on the tower. Oh, Reinhardt is almost dead every time he's on the way. So Luce is going to die here. Yep. May is working the back lines. And Diva is getting a little kick. You know, it seems like May has been something that uh, very, very popular for the game. I think it's been a very popular game. I think it's been a very popular game. I think it's been a very popular game. Alright, Ryan is fighting himself now. Diva goes to me to slip out of the crack in the wall. Diva goes down. And that's exactly what's going to happen. The rest of the team is back and ready to go. Uh, it looks like they're going to make a push off the side here on the right. May, you take this wall. You get walled off. Yep. We got Shiaki with White. We got really good angle right here. May gets walled off, but it does get in her eyes. Diva goes through down again. We do have uh, life, uh, tree of life, if we do need to hold point. I think we do take point now. That, I think we do we one now. Two fights on this part. Yeah, so if we are able to take point and then we can hold tree of life, that may buy us just enough time. Thank you so much. Oh, and taking a fire strike. It shouldn't matter too much because she's in the back line. This works up quite nicely. Okay. okay. So we got to get the format. Pojan's getting really low. Pojan does go down. This is probably a great time for the group. There it is. There it is. All the All right. And Arme, I and E, is going to try to get up some resistance. And get on their team comp is actually very similar to ours. Yeah. Uh, one of the things I feel like is kind of a little bit funky is that we have a they have a Reaper that is just really kind of sticking out of front line and being kind of getting into the back line from most of these things. Ooh, ba it. Baby Diva not able to hold point there by herself. That's understandable. Yeah. Uh, hopefully they can uh, make a strong apart. stand here and then do so fairly quickly because uh, College of New Jersey it is a very close round actually right now. If we're able to take the point back one more time, I think we would be able to win. Um, but it's gonna have to be like two rounds because it's really close round. Yeah, it's one of those things like you take all the score shots and uh, uh, there's May. May uses ice ball. Both of our both May use ice ball to kind of ball into the rock. Look at him right now. Ryan does use his shatter or earth shatter. Pojan does look to go on point. Does he get that time? Oh no. Lisa does boot her off at point just in the nick of time so she's not able to touch it. But yeah. it, would, it wouldn't really matter anyway because the team was already dead. True, but you know, prop to College of New Jersey's Lucios are having the situational awareness to realize, okay, um, about to touch point and really close to forcing us into an overtime. Like you said, probably wouldn't have mattered. There's not much chance. Knowledge is its like, own. So could have hold, held out long enough for the rest of the team to get back. But still. Uh, props to them for having a little bit of a break. Can I get a beat? Yeah. Alright, so hopefully Faulkner can do better in this particular uh, Faulkner does round. tend to help favor this uh, <laughs> section of this map a little more. You think so? Um, because it's a little more defensively. Uh, there's not a lot of entry points that are like entry points to the opponent team because most of them are like actually bad and like push. Mm -hmm. Except for the very front end. And when you're in the very front, it's kind of hard to not to focus down. Right, there's not a lot of stuff Okay, so Ryan's shield does go down. Yeah, that gap is 
Oh yeah. It does have, the shield does have a lot of damage, but it's nowhere close to the damage. Right. Oh, and unfortunately, he goes down as he gets his kill. Unfortunately, I thought he was taking a run of damage from that. Looks like Maze trying to stand here. He's unable to. The tree just limped every single shot. Yeah, I think right there, what Maze was trying to do is not Tom with the narrow escape. Love <laughs> to see it. This man can dance on the wall. Crazy. Soldier 76. Looks like they're trying a different speed charge than they got a mock in front. We still kind of trying to pop. Yeah, trying to back a little bit. Trying to like, get off the front of here. Back and trying to. Interesting. That could have worked in a, in a way. Ramacha tried blocking um, Akri's ult entirely and just like stood right in front of him while blocking. Very interesting idea. If the rest of his team was lower, lower I feel like the Faulkner uh, could have taken him. Okay. We have Ian now on Soldier. Uh, one of the things I'm kind of noticing right now, which might not be a really great thing, is that we a soft block, but it's not really great. Because it kind of Blood. negates like bolt charge. We do have soldier. Oh, Metris down. Uh, a really good idea. There. But it was an interesting idea to have it. Uh, okay, so Lucio now does have his um, his uh, ultimate. It does allow him to hold. Or keep everyone alive for about 15, ah, I'm not gonna say 15, 10 seconds. Through hardships uh, to the that's a really good way to push it in and take a point quite easily. Yeah, but they're gonna have to move pretty quickly here. They're already at 89%. Luckily, the. We did switch to Sigma. I'm not sure this is true, right? Yeah, it looks like Halsey and Jason got a little bit Oh, Tim was able to just absolutely absorb that machine uh, shot and then able to take him out. Unfortunately, we were not able to like, yeah. hold point long enough in our, our team to see it. And that's round one, Sioux College of Thinkers. Yeah, so remember to our audience, this is a best of five, which means that you've got the first round going to College of New Jersey, but Faulkner can still win whoever is the first three blocks of the this went to Faulkner and to the year that he was in the first stop to the College of New Jersey has a little notice. In the first round, very close, this one not really as close. Faulkner uh, was not able to do as much as they wanted to in that second half of that round, and so because of that, uh, Faulkner really needs to, if nothing else, just stop the momentum here so that they can get a win. Yeah, uh, I agree with this. And just win a couple couple rounds, because, you know, you can get pretty cocky after just that first round. Yeah, you can. I feel like a good composition to, like, kind of this team would be, like, a, a flanking team, or something that kind of, like, holds ground really well while your uh, DPS is able to do a lot of damage, so, like, a Reinhardt, Reaper, Sombra kind of thing. The more you're able to do a lot of damage really fast. I can see that, yeah. So I feel like they're going to have a really good idea on how to counter this team, or the, just their play style in the next round, and I feel like we're going to make a comeback. No, I could definitely see something like that happening. I think that when it comes to... Uh, one, one thing that I think that they sort of had trouble in that early match was it seemed like their team comps, like picks... Uh, they were never really comfortable with it or felt like that even at the times that they were doing well, they didn't need to make changes or adjustments. So it's kind of an indication that they don't have everything together. It's kind of like, I've made this analogy several times in football, um, you have two quarterbacks, you have no quarterbacks. Yeah. And that's kind of the thing. Like if they felt really confident uh, in their ability to hold a point or something like that, you wouldn't see a lot of that switching. So not I'm saying that they shouldn't try to counter pick or they shouldn't a lot. I'm just saying that that's sort of a an indication that they never really felt comfortable. One of the things I've seen Ian and Trey have been trying to do recently is like they try to get really good competitive team comp where everything works together on a very high level mm -hmm. um, team. Right. Um, unfortunately, I don't feel like we've 
practiced enough on blue team with like all the team comp they have in mind right. to where they are, are able to work in a efficient manner. Uh, but most of the things they do, like in their everyday average, like playing, would work very well. I feel like they're just trying to kind of get them stressed out a little bit with a more of a uh, competitive standpoint. Right. And it kind of gets them a little bit psyched out. Yeah, one thing that was interesting too is obviously you can tell that it wasn't necessarily just the uh, individual units were picking themselves that the problem because you'll notice, like I said, the other team was making a lot of the same picks. Yeah, uh, we saw a couple maze on the field several times. Uh, we never actually saw Reinhardt, but uh, we did see that they had, I believe, a Sombra briefly. Mm-hmm. Now, one thing that they'd used a lot that we didn't free. Um, yeah, but other than that, like a lot of their picks and Reaper looking, actually. But no, we never did have Reaper, did we? Yeah. They had um, the opponent team had a Reaper very early early in the first round, where I feel like that's what kind of took the round. Honestly, it kind of changed it up. At first, it wasn't a Reaper, and then they swapped quite quickly after that because they just noticed something in our team that we... I think that's kind of what happened right there. Do you think it was just like a, a lack of being able to get into the back lines and being able to do that as kind of... Up? Yeah. Uh, one of the things that we weren't able to focus on is like take on, taking out the healers as much as they were able to take out our healers first. Right. Um, because Reaper was getting into our back lines and causing a lot of havoc. Uh, we weren't able to get into their back lines and cause havoc as much because we were being kind of mercy. Yeah, one of the things that did happen a lot, I noticed that it was pretty often that Viva was the last team. Yeah. And so because of that, um, you know, that's a pretty good indication that uh, they were getting our healers pretty quickly because that they were, of course, like the last one to go down. That passed. Yeah. Normally, if you see a tank, uh, taken down first, that's an indication that the tank's actually off and keeps everybody else off. Yeah. Uh, and that's not to say that our tank wasn't his job, Four, just that that three, team was great. Alright, so going into round two, looking at, looking at this team combo, it looks a little bit different. Uh, we have a Symmetra, a Sojourn, Sigma, Baptiste, and Kiri. I love the Kiri pick, and I like the Sojourn pick. Um, the Sigma's a little bit weird. I can see it working. Um, but it's a, one of the things I want more defensively than you do want to Oh, absolutely. It's a little bit slower ish than most of the In my opinion. Which causes the kind of a first target Well, maybe that's sort of the idea, though. Is, uh, try to see yeah. Unfortunately, the playstyle is kind of just not adding up. You got. A, a slow playstyle tank like Sigma, then you have a Symmetra who just teleported them to the back line, and then they just kind of like fell apart. And, um, I feel like a, a good uh, counterfeit for this would be uh, a Soldier Reaper combo, where you're able to um, have a Soldier in the back line just kind of picking at them, and then a Reaper kind of like getting in the back, in the back lines of their team and kind of picking them apart and being able to get back out as soon as possible. That would be able to uh, kind of mess with him a little bit and probably some of the time. Yeah, so that piece is the down. Chiaki is able to get on the phone with the Faulkner, Faulkner, I feel like if they can get this uh, point, then they'll be okay because we tend to actually do much better when the push has started. Yeah. So if we can get an actual escort they mission won't quit. going, then Neither I will that I. we'll be doing a lot better with that. That seems to be the mode that we're most comfortable with. this team right now is really good. I wasn't expecting such a, a high, high post-style team this late season. Yeah, so they're currently ranked number four, and I believe they're the head of the Okay. So, yeah, so Sojourn gets a really nice uh, shot on the Taiwan. Uh, that was Dragons. They just ult dumped right there. Um, that was Dragons. That's Pizzo. Um, it might have been one more than this. Yeah, quite effective. I'm not a yeah. fan of setbacks. And as you can see, a very quick team wipe. Faulkner needs to reevaluate their strategy going into this. I'm not sure, but I feel like we have almost all of our ult, which means we might be able to take point with just ult. 
Yeah, so you can see Shadow here, he's at 94, so basically just has to get a, hit a couple of targets here and he's going to go on old. Those are all really hard to use. Uh, a lot of Sojin's abilities just rely heavily on him. Not the more hit shots, but he's really in the second There is uh, a Lari down. Yeah, I was about to say, Hector played all those. Uh, Soldier Lonzo was up in the back line. Oh yeah, so, so it was Soldier ult and then Lonzo got the kill on uh, Viva. Yeah, we have a we have enough time for one more um, team encounter right now, and then it's probably going to be um, game end for us. But we do have a few ult that we we would be able to use with our version here. Only thirty seconds left. We've got to make big. Yeah, our our uh, shadow does go down. Unfortunately, so the one DPS down. Is yeah, it's gonna be really hard to do this. Now he's put his bubble on. Oh, and they do get a kill. And another. Uh, oh my god. Okay, they might actually Ian's make this happen. Ian's going crazy. Whoa, whoa, Nelly. That was beautiful. That was a heck of a team effort there. That was worthy of highlight reel right there. That was maybe so. That was very I think good. So, so that means that we're going to get cargo here. Yep. Unfortunately, we cargo we had uh, overtime right there, which means that we have very, very little time to get the payload to where it needs to go, which is very unfortunate. But we still have a chance. Which we always do. Uh, we have um, Viva in the front with Viva trying to pick up the front line so to come back to be able to get the, the uh, payload as far as possible before they're able to contest. A very good strategy. Um, some tank. Uh, I just want to say one thing before we keep going. Uh, Tom's doing a great job tonight with how he's playing. I'm just really, really impressed. <laughs> I love watching Tom. This is that baffles me every single time I watch him. He's like he never dies. I mean, I guess that's how the song go, goes. You know, legends never die. Yeah, that is that is definitely how it goes. All right, in con oh, an and off wow. angle and absolutely destroys from that angle. You love to see it. And then if we're able to keep the, the tank alive a little bit longer, we'd be able to stagger them. But unfortunately, we did not have that idea. And the tank does die quite quickly, which is still good. It's still good. Uh, I think we're going to be able to get quite close to the finish line right here. But it's going to be interesting how they uh, kind of finish this game off. I can see this going both ways, honestly, but Faulkner does have a really good uh, push right now. Uh, they did switch to Sigma, which is interesting. So Oris is gone, and Sigma is now in. Sigma kind of getting pressed by the Lucy on the back line, kind of getting bullied, and kind of like moves around a little bit. Um, I love to see it. Switches to healing, unable to heal enough. Oh, um, and we've got Diva Bomb. Diva How's Trey gonna use this? Diva does back out here. Oh, I couldn't yep. see it. Oh no! Wait, did he? No, he didn't. I thought when I saw him get out of the mech and his thing go down to zero, I thought he used it, but he didn't. Oh no, no, that was yeah, his mech getting destroyed. Yeah, that threw me off for a second too. Yeah. Fortunately, we do have enough time. Um, like I said, we this is very close. We have enough time for one more team push. We do have three ults, which does put us in a very good um, spot. I said I uh, hit it back four ult. Uh, so we can take this easy, but we really need to touch and fast. We only have 10 seconds to get on point. Yep, uh, Soldier does ult, Soldier goes down, we have 5 seconds to get in there, and I don't see us touching here. Wait, here it goes. Are they gonna make it? Hey, we're on point. Holy cow! They're able to move fast. Wow. Okay. Oh, and Light Weaver's able to get them out of, um, Sigma ult. I just see a whole bunch of ults going right here. It's crazy. Yeah. Life Weaver ult goes down. Uh, Diva's able to try and survive a little bit here. Um, I can't see um, Diva dying too much right here. She just stays next to the, the tree. Um, we're able to keep him alive. Reaper now and on the other uh, opponent team. Lucio does get low. Diva ult, no kill. Soldier getting low. It was saved by the last minute by Life Weaver. Shockey's going off right now. And I think we pulled back. We just they really pulled back. did. Uh, All right, so are we going to get to the checkpoint? I just saw someone left the game. That was on the enemy team, I think. I hope that wasn't like the. I don't uh, know. Who left the game? No. 
I don't know. My brain's playing tricks on me then. <laughs> but uh, props to the team, especially Chiaki, for popping that tree of life at exactly the right time. It was a very good placement. You love to see your healers doing the job the way they're meant to, and, and that we, was just perfect. And I know we commented on Trey's Diva Bomb not getting any kills, which is pretty, but it actually spread the team out and made it easier for the rest of the team to pick it off. So yeah, Diva Bomb didn't actually get a kill, but it did space the other team out, which allowed them to kill. Them. Yeah. Um, Sombra now we have on Ian, which is very good pick, honestly, um, to kind of try and counter the Reinhardt. Um, oh, and Genji. I, I can say as a Genji player, I hate playing against Sombra. <laughs> All those, like, tiny characters are really hard to play against. Yeah. Uh, with the new uh, Sombra rework, it's been so much fun. I've, I've played a little bit of Sombra. She's a lot crazier than she used to do. Uh, she used to be. We well, do have Lucio kind of bullying people in the back line. I'm just going out crazy. Who needs a, a DPS when you have a Lucio? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's uh, not one you hear too often. But with only 17 seconds, uh, this is not looking good for the Eagles. They're going to have to pull something off pretty drastic here. Looks like Diva's going to try and cut point, but I don't see her touching point. Yeah, really even with reliable. her flight ability, I could see her. Ooh, oh, wait, maybe. Reaper should die here. All right, only we need one second. Point. We're on point. And they and are. there's Tree of Life. Wow. I think Reaper did ult right there, but it just got absolutely like destroyed by the D.Va's uh, Matrix. Oh, oh unfortunate. No. Um, everyone does go down at the last minute, and yeah, that's, that's, that's game. Or, sorry, that's round. You're right. <laughs> yeah. So that's that's the round, but you know Faulkner can still win this one. They just have to make sure that they don't get the payload as far as Faulkner did. So if they can prevent that from happening, with to their credit, with that last stand and being able to reach checkpoint, they were able to get a uh, checkpoint. What was that about seventy-five-ish percent of the way there? Uh, yeah, I'd say about seventy-five percent. Seventy, it was, it was seventy-five, something yeah. like that. Yeah, it's hard to gauge it because they don't give you a precise percentage, but yeah, uh, they'll mark it on the map, of course, when the next team goes on. Uh, yeah. Uh, and we'll be able to see how far they were able to get payload. So uh, we will see that momentarily. So even if we don't know the exact percentage, we'll be able to see it. Yeah. But one of the things I loved seeing last round was just D.Va absolutely like doing her job. I, I know Viva is like one of our better players, but watching him play D.Va to the extent is just very satisfying. I love watching it. Definitely is. And it's always really nice to see how everybody else basically has to play around the D.Va. Yeah. When that happens. Well, I'm surprised they didn't change the off D.Va for uh, a defensive map. Only because D.Va is such a uh, aggressive aggro character. I would see uh, Sigma, Reinhardt, Arisa, someone like that being really good to play as defense. I but can see that, yeah. I feel like this team comp actually work. Like, you got D.Va right here in the front. You've got Bastion on the top, along with Soldier. A lot of hit skin characters that are able to kind of melt people right as soon as they kind of come out. With D.Va, you're able to like absorb the projectiles right before they even hit your teammates. So now you have you see uh, oh, Bastion. Bastion. Yeah, very aggressive team comp indeed. All right, you have Orisa on the opponent team. You've got a, I think that's a Tracer, right, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe not. Uh, nope. They're, they're so Genji get a couple soldier. kills here. Uh, Shadow is able to take down Genji, and of course Diva is able to take out. Any, or no, wait, that was bad. Sorry, I thought it was you. Yeah. Um, looks like they're able to kind of make a very good hold here. They spread out just in the in the way that you want. You spread out right here. Um, the Bastion does go oh. for wheels. Looks like a very good spot right here. He's getting constantly healed almost by this. Uh, the healers, the healers just doing a great job. They're making a push to the right, oh, but Diva is able to get another kill on that Baptiste again. Yep. So Baptiste, uh, they may. Arisa wonder. should die soon, and I think because we have a really good Bastion right now. If I'm not mistaken, Shadow playing Bastion now. Is that the case? I did. That. Yeah, we got Shadow yeah, playing Shadow Bastion. Yeah, Shadow is on Bastion. He's got impeccable aim. This, yeah. He's able to like, kind of snap targets like he just perfectly. Uh, he does go down, which is, actually could be an interesting thing. Uh, since Bastion does go down, he can use ult from spawn and try and find clutch up here for the victory or for the hold. Yeah, and uh, Ian getting a kill on that Genji going to be really important for keeping the back lines alive. Ian does go on the point and try and hold it. I probably would have stayed up on the ledge, just to try and get a, a height advantage. 
Um, but a very good hold from Faulkner. Very good hold. Yep. Uh, unfortunately, it looks like they are going to unlock payload here. Yep. And do so with a full two minute buff. Ah, he was unable to touch point in time to make another hold. Um, but it's all fine. We do have a bunch of alt ready to use, so holding point should not be a problem. We do see a trade. Bastion does, does get a, a a pick on the Genji, but they both go down. Soldier trying to get some kind of leverage on them right now. Yeah, we should note though that our team has, I believe, three ults at the moment, so it's uh, probably four. Soldier almost has his. Should should be able to uh, Ooh. make a pretty strong stand here. Daria swap. Interesting. Very interesting. I love to see Zarya swap in a competitive match. It's just, it, it works really well, and it's able to get by the front line, able to get like, oh, that is a Genji ult right there, and that's a scary thing. <laughs> yes, yes it is. And uh, Soldier does go down the other Soldier. Uh, very good pick. Genji gets uh, two kills, and Arisa makes another kill. Um, so we, uh, I think we do lose this point right here, but it was a very very uh old dump situation we might be able to touch the last second but it's boy i didn't realize how close Faulkner got the checkpoint we got close. Um, yeah i mean it's it's about halfway to the but ah uh, oh wait we still get it we still get it oh nice uh zari is able to touch the last second but is unable to hold point we do have um yeah by that, of point, here. by that point though zaria was just had too many missing teammates to be able to make a stand yeah uh, the rest of the team does get wiped. Uh, one of the things I think would be really good for this, for like the counter for this right now, is like a look at Junkrat, honestly. Because they're all like really huddled together and just. Yeah, like, I could I could see something like that. Just try to space them out some, try to make it easier for somebody else. Like, uh, that's why you could see like a Junkrat for combo, like if they're having Ana or a. Um... Yeah, I could see that. Uh, one of the things that most jump rep players do is they kind of stay in the back line and are able to just kind of pester the, the front lines a lot and even the back lines too. Um, looks like uh, College of New Jersey is going to be getting really close to point and there's not a lot we can do to stop them. They did switch to Reinhardt. And this team is really good at um, kind of counterpicking our game and I feel yeah. like once you get into the, the habit of counterpicking it first, you kind of start getting on an uphill roll. Definitely can. Uh, unfortunately, that is going to be it for round two. So Faulkner now out of any kind of grace. They're going to have to win all three without losing a single one drawn out if they want to win this. Round. I just say win this, this. This Reinhardt, his name would just fit perfectly. Comrade. Comrade. <laughs> That's hilarious because Reinhardt is German. Right. But I mean, comrade is. That's yeah, I was Russian, about to say, yeah. comrade is more traditionally associated with Russian, but isn't uh, <laughs> Widowmaker a Russian? I know Anna is. Uh, no, Widowmaker is French. Oh, that's right. Uh, uh, I know Zarya is Russian. Is Zarya Russian? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, so many characters, so many uh, lore and stuff. You'd never be able to keep it all straight. Very, I can't very multicultural. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, so Comrade, I would say, is more associated with Russian, but definitely something you could hear a, a Reinhardt German act too. Yeah. Uh, after round two, what do you think we're going to be doing for, or not really doing, but like, what do you think our, uh, the map's going to be for round three? You know, traditionally, just based on my experience watching all the games this season, uh, they tend to save Flashpoint for a rubber match if it's going to be uh, a match five or a match four. Mm -hmm. uh, but sometimes if one team is up by two, they go straight for Flashpoint. And if I had to guess, that's probably what they're going to do here. I mean, maybe we see a different game mode here, but I think if, maybe they go pushbot. But and I, I would, was hoping for a pushbot. I was about bot. to say I'd prefer pushbot, but I think they're going to wind up going. Yeah, pushbot is probably my personal favorite map pick right now because it's just like it's a point you don't need to unlock, and it's just it's really good. Right. I just like Pushbot, honestly, because I really enjoy, like, escorting the robot. I think that's... Yeah, so. it's, it's pretty funny. You're right. But, I mean, it is fun <laughs> to play. Like, it's also, like... Yeah, the thing is, Faulkner tends to be better with the more mobile team comps, and Pushbot, you're constantly moving regardless of which way you're going. Like, whether you're on offense or defense, you're both trying to put. Uh, so, because of that, I really do think that that's, like, the better uh, pick for us is because... 
Uh, Flashpoint is just a series of smaller control points. We've not had a lot of success to team on. Yeah. So I'd much rather us have a push bot. Flashpoints are a lot easier to hold in the sense that they don't take long to like win them at all. But they're very dangerous because if you do get off of them, the team can take it very fast too. Right. It's very unforgiving. Yep. So just one of those very bad moments <laughs> when you get a, a flashpoint, you know? But, yeah. I mean, hopefully it won't cause any problems, but we'll see. We'll see where it goes. Um, but either way, you know, with this uh, next round, it looks like they're getting started right now. Looks like we are go, um, opting for a flashpoint this time. Actually. It is going to be flashpoint. Yeah, so we're going to see a flashpoint here in just a second. Yep. And uh, I think that the team is going to have to adopt. Uh, now, granted, flashpoint is not as uh, immobile as your regular control point apps because you're not trying to, you are trying to take multiple different points, which is moving around a lot more than you would on a normal control point. But it's still one of the more defensive minded maps, so I think we're going to see a more defensive. I can see like the team going for something kind of stupid and crazy at the same time, like something like a ball character coming in, or uh, maybe like a roadhog, or something, something fun, but also kind of like not very defensive because well, it's such a fast paced. That, that's true, and then sometimes there is something to be said. I would say that this is always the best strategy. But there is something to be said for legitimately just trying to throw the other team off their game. Yeah. Ball does tend to do that. <laughs> yeah, because, I mean, he's... It's kind of like in Smash Bros. we were talking about the other day. One of the reasons that I think that Ice Climbers has been so disruptive is because for the longest time, nobody even worried about counterplaying them because nobody had to. No one wanted to play Ice Climbers. Right. And so because of that, that's kind of the way that it wound up. All right, so here they go. They're going into... Uh, the first point, which unlocked seconds. We have an Arisa. Very good pick, honestly. Um, yeah. Um, along with May, Baptiste, Fashion, very solid pick. Arisa does feel like one of the more mobile things. Ah, uh, Fashion does go down very early in the match, though. Uh, I think they kind Do of. Do they have a Widowmaker? Uh, no, it was the Genji, actually. Oh! Their Genji's really good. Yeah, that we have seen that Genji play an awful lot. Yeah. Uh, Tank does go down. Uh, it looks like they just went on team wipe right there um one of the things i could feel like would be really good for right now would be surprisingly enough a reinhardt because that he'd be able to hold the defensive line just long enough for us to be able to take a few picks maybe get like better advantage spot and, and then maybe a a different character like uh fashion's good but maybe like a soldier or a, a reaper or something something that can do a lot of damage real fast well you know i'm always there for some reinhardt play yeah but we it do looks switch. like we go for Roadhog. <laughs> I, like I called that. <laughs> I gotta be honest, I didn't think they were gonna do that. But yeah. Oh, the tank, does that go down? Uh, well. Oh, he just went away. Where did he even go? That's crazy. All right. Uh, May does try and mess with the Genji, but is unable to kind of like hold him down long enough to do solid damage. I feel like our teams. That particular um, flashpoint is kind of open, and it's hard to even with a May wall to really set somebody off because it is a little bit wide open. You don't have a lot of narrow choke points. Well, actually, I was going to say the exact opposite because of the doorways. They're just really small, and then there's just one room, and then you just go into this very big one. If you're able to hold a team in that room, or even at this giant archway right here, it's just a really good choke, choke, ah, choke point. Oh, and over here. <laughs> well, I was talking about more like once you get inside of oh, it. Oh, yeah. Once yeah. you get inside of it, it's really open. It's like, yes, there are choke points around it, but once you get inside like we were a second ago, it, it, there's not a whole lot you can do for a Genji that's already there. Yeah. I agree with this. Yep. <laughs> See, that's why clarification is important. It looks like we're yeah. going for the second flashpoint. Basically, uh, once that one was done, immediately decided to just try to head the other team off the pass and get the point first. Uh, other Ooh. team running a Doomfist and an Ana. It's a very good team um, compact play because you're able to use uh, Doomfist to try and take a lot of ground, kind of bully the team, make them kind of scared, and then the team kind of like kind of goes into like a like oh no how we take care of this uh, Doomfist instead of how we take care of these healers instead, mm -hmm. and then the team kind of gets more laser focused on one person instead because Doomfist does cause a lot of problems. 
uh, in the back lines. Well, Doomfist comes from an almost completely different philosophy of tank because as the Reinhardt tank, what you're wanting is like basically you're, you're trying to use your, your beefy defense and your big shield to keep everybody away from the healer so they don't have an option to go in for them. With Doomfist, you're like so much of a threat that you're actually more, they focus on you because they feel like they have to. And yeah. so it's a completely different sort of style of tank philosophy. Ooh, a nice hook there, but doesn't quite land. Ooh, but he does did get the kill though. Nice. He does have ult now. I feel like we'd be able to hold point and even push people off this point with, with uh, a Rotalog's ult. It's just gotten so much better since this Overwatch one, uh, in my in my humble opinion. Well, I like <laughs> how it uh, looks like a meat grinder when he just is like turning. Yeah, it. it's like I could see Roadhog making some ground beef that way. He does have a skin called the Butcher for a reason. Yes, yes, he does. <laughs> ah, now I'm right. hungry. <laughs> you should probably get some chain rib check. Ah, I would I really get that close? Uh, unfortunately. Yep. All right, we're able to walk yep. off the tank and. Tank, uh, our tank oh. does go for the ult and is able to push both of the main problems off the point. Yeah, and able to get the kill on that soldier. Very oh, nice man. combination of hook and bringing them in. So now the team is a little bit staggered. If they can get a couple of kills here, they are Doom able to Fist get the Doomfist was trying to get away, and Roadhog just grappled him. And it's like, nah, get back over here. It's like, get over here. You yeah. <laughs> He does the uh, scorpion thing. Yeah, exactly. That was, and it looks like that was Shadow still good. has ult, so yeah, uh, wow. we could still potentially get the... Um, uh, that actually might be really smart. We did too. a whole point right there. We have one to one now. So we it's a tied match. I could see Shadow, though, kind of staying outside of this um, point and then using his ult to like press into point. Yeah, no, I was going to say he could, if nothing else, force the other team to scatter and, and have to move away from his ult if he's able to uh, attack point directly. Yep. And you got Doomfist again in the front, and Bastion does go down, unfortunately. Yeah, not but good. You, don't, you can't really expect much more because of a Doomfist. <laughs> right. Uh, Doomfist Bat does hit back lines and is able to take healer, and that's, I think that's where we get to lunch. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, going to have to come back strong and come back with a different strategy. Luckily, they were able to hold it to where the other team wasn't just gaining percentage this entire time. So you'll notice that they were able to touch point enough to where they were never able to claim point for themselves while they were fighting, which was smart. But they're going to have to do something to be able to get point back here. Yeah, I feel like the team kind of stopped focusing solely on their tank now and is focusing a little more on their back line. See, you can see the, the tank right here trying to go after Ana. Unfortunately, it does get slept, but it's still a very respectable attempt. Ooh. Unfortunately, oh, no. he does go down before he can get the heal off. Roadhog is just one of those characters that you just, if you miss the healing opportunity, you just die because yeah. he's such a big character. Uh, it's just really unforgiving. It really can be. Uh, in, in Smash Bros, we would say he's got a very large hitbox. Oh, yeah. In my world, there are no we do see a, a Sombra come out. I wasn't really expecting it, but I kind of wanted to see it at the same time um, because if you use a Sombra against a... Uh, a really good so do you think they're going to go to point here or are they going to just go to the next one they're going to the next one that's what i figured there's no way that you can even i mean there is there's a chance you could get the point but it's just a losing battle because they'd probably be able to well it's it's high risk low reward because there's yeah. almost no chance you wind up taking that point and then you're also in a bad way if you get team wiped uh, for them to go to the next point because they'll basically take it as soon as your team gets wiped yeah. out being able to hold, take point first is actually a really good strategy because you're able to hold point at a very much uh, higher advantage rate. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the chances of you holding point better is a lot more when you are on point first. All right, so this Sombra having to bide its time. Yeah. And I know Ian is just waiting for the opportunity. There it is. Moment. And there it is. I'm gonna attack the Doomfist, smart. He's able to get out of there just in the time. He did get seen. Oh. oh, somebody's chasing him. Yep. What do you mean? I don't know what just happened there. There's no way he was invisible. Okay, that was suspicious because there's no way a Doomfist could see a, a Sombra that's invisible and hit her perfectly like that. Unless it was just dumb luck, and I don't think it was that either. 
That Maybe was. it was just because she was going into a narrow corridor and he like just figured she'd be somewhere in the corridor. That's the only know. explanation I can come up with. That that was a little bit weird. I I am with you though. That's that's bizarre. I would not have seen that coming. All right. Uh, looks like Lucy's trying to push people up, like, around in the back, and he's doing a really good job. Uh, does get anteed. Um, Bastion's getting a little low in the front, and Lucy does get messed up by the Reaper. We did swap to Winston. We're getting a lot of swaps right now. I'm not sure that's a Ooh. great idea. Um, because now we don't have any old charge and it's unfortunate because that is probably gonna be the end of the game. Yeah, there's uh they're gonna have to do something pretty we can't make here. it back. I don't think so either. Especially after not it gets to, so far up. After it gets to about eighty five, you can't push point from spawn. Yeah, that's the thing that is annoying about flashpoint is that because they do uh, lock fairly quickly, um you really only have until about eighty percent and then there's almost no chance you make it back to the flashpoint. Yeah. One of those characters that I could have seen going really well into this, like to hold in point early, would be like a, a Symmetra. Because you'd be able to hold point early and then you'd be able to do damage to tank and then it just would have worked. Uh, we didn't see that unfortunately tonight, but we did see a really good amount of skill and uh, expertise in our line and in the opponent line too. Yeah, it seems like it was uh, just a, a number of issues and it wasn't like major, major faux pas it was more like just a little mistake here or there or a miscalculation so yeah uh, hopefully we're able to you know take this and, and learn from it and be able to come back strong and maybe finish out the season with a win next tuesday uh, but before we do that we're going to go ahead and take a quick break here and we'll be back in just a moment with the post game show Bless the corners of this house and be the lintel blessed. Bless the hearth and every board and each place of rest and every door that opens wide to stranger as to kin and every crystal window pane that lets the stars For solace and safety home Where the world will not break me home Never forsake me, take me Welcome back, folks. Thank you so much for being with us here for the post-game show after this game, uh, Faulkner versus College of New Jersey. That final result, unfortunately, ended with the Eagles not being able to come out victorious. College of New Jersey wins by a score of 3-0. Uh, to zero. We're here with the team captain, Trey, otherwise known as Viva Caligula. So, Trey, one of the things I wanted to ask you about is it seemed as though uh, we had some bright spots and sometimes there were, we were really cooking. We were able to take one of the flash points in round three. Uh, it seemed like we were doing really well sort of in the middle of round two when we were protecting payload, but then uh, a couple of really big team wipes. It seemed like it was never that they'd take out one or two that when, when one fell, the whole team fell. And so what exactly was what was the reason for that? Was it uh, just a... Not not having a backup plan, or, or what what was the issue there? So something that we prioritize a lot in our practices is, um, you know, making sure that we're pushing in as a group and committing to one single idea and making it to the point, actually committing on our attacks, but 
something that I definitely think we can work on is making sure that we're paying attention to who we're attacking and actually confirming kills. So we can do a lot of damage, but if we're not killing anybody, then nothing's actually going to happen. So sort of target priority. Right. And then um, if you noticed on Parisio, uh, we could get to the point, but then they, uh, whenever we were on attack, they would just hold high ground and kind of shoot us like fish in a barrel. So um, we probably could have instead of just pushing on to point continuously, we could have uh, focused on trying to knock them off of their high ground or at least um, do something different because we um, kind of were failing to the same thing, to the same attacks that they were doing. So they, they just had better um, kill priority and just better coordination overall. I got you. One thing I did want to ask about, because uh, it was a play that I was pretty impressed with, I noticed that there was one play where you were D.Va in round two, and you used D.Va Bomb. It didn't get any kills, but it kind of scattered the entire team to where it was easy for your teammates to pick it off, and I thought that that was a really good uh, example of the coordination that you're, you're talking about. All right. Um, yeah, with D.Va Bomb, um, you kind of learn as you play her more that it's not so much about hitting the trick shots by, like, shooting it up, but more about using it to sort of like how Winston uses his ult and giving him a second life. Um, mm -hmm. She can use it to, if she realizes that she's about to die, because if you don't know, you can use her um, ultimate even when she's demecking. So after she's already died, she can still have some sway. Right. So in that situation, if I remember correctly, um, I remember dropping the bomb and it didn't kill everybody, but it got everyone extremely low and scattered. So, um, you know, you couldn't hear the mics, but I was calling out the people who had um, been hit by the bomb, and that's whenever they went in and killed the people that were um, hit by the blast. Gotcha. Well, um, I know that this obviously was not the result that we were hoping for, but uh, it does seem like there were some things that we at least spotted in our own team makeup that we need to work on and tighten up the screws. Uh, but hopefully we're able to take this and, and be able to finish the season on a win in our next game because, of course, that is the last game of the season. Right, right. Yep. And speaking of that, uh, we are going to go ahead and give you an update on when that is. So our next Overwatch game is actually going to be against the University of North Alabama, and that is going to be Tuesday, November the 7th at 6 p.m., so be sure to check that out. And our next broadcast will be back on the air tomorrow, uh, Smash Bros. White versus Alabama State University. That's tomorrow at 6 p.m. And one of the really cool things about that is because it's Alabama State and that university happens to be right here in the same city as us, they're actually going to be here in person. So the team is going to be coming over here and all of the matches are going to be live. So that's going to be really cool. We're going to really be looking forward to hosting them and having them come over. So that'll be a lot of fun. Be sure to check out that broadcast. And again, that is 6 p.m. tomorrow. So that's going to be our next broadcast. So that's going to be it for us this evening. A special thanks to Trey for being willing to come in and give us a little insight into the game. And my production staff, of course, Mike Johnston. And I do want to mention that he said that he got a little help from KP as well. Uh, that was helping with some sound issues. So uh, the two of them working together, giving them some credit. Also, special thanks to my broadcast partner, Josh Chauci, doing a fantastic job of giving some color commentary and sort of spicing up our coverage of the game. And as for me, I'm head coach Caleb Colquitt saying thank you and uh, thank you so much for watching. And we will see you soon. Until that next broadcast, which of course is at 6 p.m. tomorrow with that Smash Bros. match against ASU. Until that happens, stay the course, friends. The preceding broadcast was an official presentation of Faulkner University. It may not be redistributed without the express written consent of the Faulkner University Athletic Department. Regitar USA High Res Arena is sponsored by Regitar USA. The national anthem was performed by the Faulkner University Chorus. If you would like to learn more about the Faulkner Esports program, visit our official website at FaulknerEagles.com or follow us on Discord, Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, and Instagram for all the latest news and events. Thank you for watching and soar